Hello, what is up guys? Eman from Peso Smart PH here. Welcome sa panibagong episode. Shout out sa mga podcast listeners as well. I appreciate you all. Today, let's talk about peso cost averaging. And before we go to our example, define mo natin kung saan ba nanggaling yung peso cost averaging. So, na-derive siya sa dollar cost averaging or DCA. This is an approach to purchasing an investment in which the buyer spreads out their purchases so that the total price paid is less affected by market timing. That is the most common pitfall sa mga newbie investors. They always try to time the market. Sometimes, if you're lucky enough, then probably matimingan mo yung market sa first trade mo. But it's kind of hard to do it consistently. Kasi no one can predict what the market will do on any given day. 100% of the time. We always say that dito sa channel. So, nagawa itong dollar cost averaging para hindi tayo maging emotional kapag bibili tayo ng mga stocks. So, dollar cost averaging is the practice of systematically investing equal amounts of money at regular intervals, regardless of the price of a security. And this will also parang train you or this will develop your habit of investing. Kasi nga, regardless of the price, you don't really care. You will still buy on, for example... Nag-set ka, first Monday of the month, you will buy the stock that you chose. And your budget mo is 5,000 pesos. So, you don't really care. Every first Monday of the month, you will buy even if the stock is trading, let's say, at 5 pesos per share. Or in some months, naging 8 pesos na. Naging 15 pesos. Naging 2 pesos. You don't really care. You will buy every first Monday of the month. And for example, maging holiday yung Monday, then you will switch to Tuesday. So that's how dollar cost averaging works. And it's quite similar with best cost averaging. Siyempre, binago lang currency. Instead of dollar, which is US dollars, maging peso, maging PHP or Philippine peso. Let's move on to our example. Yung ginamit ko na stock dito is SCC, Semirara Mining and Power Corporation. We've been covering this stock since 2020 since I've also owned some SEC stocks before. And siya yung ginamit ko kasi maganda yung run niya currently from the lows ng around 8.30 ng 2020. Nasa 41 pesos na siya nag-trade ngayon. So that is a really good run currently for this stock and for this company. So nagset tayo ng budget na 5,000 pesos. And yung frequency ng pagbili ng stock for this example is every month. Kasi every month naman tayo sumisweldo sa mga sa mga employed dyan. And yung pinakaunang trading day yung ginawa ko. Kung bagay yung open price for that particular month. Yun yung nilagay ko na price per share dito. And then, ito, you can ignore this kasi hindi naman estimate lang to kasi kailangan pa rin sundin yung board lot, diba, for for buying stocks. So, instead of uh, 226, making 200 lang to and the other same thing. But, I just want, hindi ko na to binago para lang makita nyo yung, like, kumbaga difference, no? And, yeah, I mean, ma-adjust naman yun kapag ka nasa mismong online broker accounts na kayo. And, it won't let you buy, like, for example, 226 shares of SEC. But, yeah, anyway. Kung nag peso cost average ka nung 2020, start nung January, medyo mahal pa yung SEC stocks at that time. Kasi, wala pong pandemic nito. Then, nung March, nag-open pa nga siya at 19.50. And then, March 19, dun na bumagsak yung market. And then, April, kita nyo naman, 11.30 na lang. 
yung stock prices ng Semerara. But no March, bumabayan to 8.30. That was the lowest no March 2020. But of course, since yung sinet natin is first trading day of the month sa 19.5 na kabili at this particular month. And then, na-average out na siya. For the whole year, yung average price, average, uh, anong tawag dito? Cost basis ng portfolio na to. 60K currently. And then, 13.58 pesos per share yung average price. Yung total na nabili is around 4,820 shares. And if we take a look kung lump sum, no? yung ginawa natin instead of 5,000 pesos per month ginawa nating lump sum if you bought s- nung start ng 2020 then 2,715 2, shares lang mo bibili mo that's a difference of 2,105 stocks and then as you can see here meron din namang mga mas marami sana yung nabili mo no? instead of instead of dollar cost or peso cost averaging but again, it's kind of hard to time the market. But ito rin yung maging advantage nyo kapag medyo exposed na kayo sa macroeconomics and in general sa stock market. Kasi you know when it's a good time to buy. So kapag alam nyo na yun, for example, katulad nga nito, di ba, nagkaroon ng pandemic, peep, Majority ng tao, they're, they're selling. Kasi nakita nila, uy, bumagsak yung stock ko ng 50%. I'm gonna sell. I'm gonna cut loss. Which doesn't really make any sense. Unless, again, you really need the money for emergency purposes. And hindi naman natin may iwasan yun. Kasi nga, emergency. But if you're just selling just because you're scared, then that is not the right thing to do. And kapag ka nga naka-sale, kung naka-fire sale yung mga stocks, then that is the time to buy. That is the time to double down on your investments. And makita natin yung difference dito ng dollar cost averaging and kung dito ka nagde-deploy ng mas malaking capital nung mababa yung prices. But of course, no one really knows kung mas bababa pa. And no August nga, 2020, di ba? Mas bumaba pa yung prices ulit ng stock na to. Then eventually, nag-rebound na ulit to 12.60 nung December. And lahat naman to, sa current market price na 41 pesos. Kung nag-stop ka na mag-invest ng 2020, yung portfolio mo na 60K na 4,820 na shares, nasa 197,000 pesos na siya today. Again, hindi naman lahat ng stocks is ganito yung performance currently. Maganda lang talaga yung run ng Semerara. That's why ito yung ginawa kong example. And kita nyo dito, kahit kung nag sum ka lang at that time, you're still in the, in the green side of, of gains and losses. So kahit na 22.10 per share mo binili yung 60, pinambili yung 60k mo, you're still up 85.52% after 2 years. After more than 2 years. Diba? So, it really pays off if you have a longer term strategy or time frame sa investments mo. So, hindi talaga overnight nangyayari yung massive gains. And as you can see here, diba? yung 60k mo before, after just 2 years, Yung pinakumababang gain dito is 85.52%. So, yung 60 mo almost a double to 111,000. And the biggest was kung, kung magaling kang tumayming, kung swerte ka. <laughs> Nasa 333.86%. That's around 260,000 pesos. So, around 200k yung kinita ng 60k mo. If you sell now at 41 pesos per share. But, that's not our goal here. Our goal is to build a dividend portfolio. So let's go from 2020 to 2021. So same thing, 5k yung budget natin. And syempre yung naging total dito since 2 years na naging 120k. So nung start ng 2021, 
nagte-trade lang sideways yung Semerara. And then nag-boom lang talaga siya nung latter part na ng 2021. And eventually, mas naging nagparabolic siya earlier this year because of the energy crisis. And kapag na-total natin yun, yung total shares na nabili ng 120,000 pesos is around 8,746. And if lump sum yan, again, may mga red, may mga green. But everything, kapag kakinumper pa rin natin, you're still up. So, syempre dito, same thing lang yung gains and losses nung 2020. Kasi, nag-increase lang naman yung initial capital. So, same number of shares lang, na-double lang, no? yung nabili mo na share. So, same thing lang yung gains and losses dito. And dito, may iba na. Kasi medyo tumataas na yung prices ng Semerara dito. And nag-sed niya siya at around 20-ish pesos per share by the last quarter or the fourth quarter of 2021. So, yung 120k mo, kung nag-average ka lang, kung nag-pepeso ko average ka lang, nasa 14 pesos and 84 centavos yung average price mo. Yung nabili mo again is 8,746. And with the current price na 41 pesos per share, yung 120k mo naging 358,584. You're up 198%. So, kung dito mo lang nilump sum, no? so isang bagsakan lang, syempre mas malaki yung kikitain mo. But again, you can't accurately predict the market. 100% of the time. And the following months, dun mas maganda bumili. But after that, tumas na yung prices. So, like, mas konti na yung mabibili mo na stock kung lump sum yung ginawa mo. And again, nag-aantay ka lang. ba? Diba? Like, for example, noong 2020, kung di ka bumili yung stocks dito, bumili ka around June na ng 2021. Na-miss mo yung dividend payments noong April. Which would have added around 7,000 pesos sa buying power mo. Dito natin titignan yun later on. And then, mo, hindi mo nun mamimiss out kasi kung for example, bumili ka, sabi, sabi mo, oy, ano, nag 12 pesos na ulit, 12.25 pesos na ulit yung Semerara. I will buy here. Lagi ko dito yung 120k ko. Then, yan. Mas marami kang mabibiling shares. So, around more than 100, hindi, more than 1,000 shares yung mabibili, 1,050. Ano ba yung sinasabi ko? May difference na nga dito <laughs> for, for visuals. But yeah. Again, it's much easier to just peso cost average. And once you learn basic technical analysis na rin naman, if alam mong overheated yung market, like for example, ngayon, kung tingnan mo yung RSI ng Semerara, monthly RSI yun, it's, it's above 70. So, Is it really a good time to buy right now? Probably not. But kung yung budget mo naman is around 5k lang din a month, then it, it shouldn't really hurt your portfolio. Kasi medyo malaki na rin yung portfolio mo. But kung i-combine mo itong fundamentals and technicals, then you will you will have, you will have a better chance of earning more. But again, it's much easier to peso cost average. Kasi hindi na-involve yung emotions natin when we're trying to buy the asset. Kasi naka-set lang every first Monday of the month, I will buy the stock. I don't care what the price is. I will do it consistently. And lahat ng mga dividends na matatanggap mo is i-reinvest mo lang din. And now, let's get to that. So, nagbigay ng 1 point, I believe 1.25 nung April. So, kung, kung susundan natin yung timeline na yun, then, dito tayo makakabili ng additional shares. So, around 7,149. O, oh, tama. 1.25 nga ito. Nasa 7,140 na yung net mo after mabayaran yung 10% na na dividend tax. 
So, dito mo siya ma reinvest So, madadagdagan ng 7,149 yung capital mo na 5,000. So, instead na 5,000, may gin 12.1k na yung capital mo for May. And you will buy at 12.40 per share. Nasa 980 shares yun yung mabibili mo. And kita mo yung difference dito, di ba? So, mas malaki na yung makukuha mo or mabibili mo na stocks in comparison sa lump sum. Kasi, invested ka na sa market eh. Nadadagdagan yung shares mo kasi nire-reinvest mo yung mga natatanggap mo. And then, mas malaki kasi yung binigay nila nung November. Around 1.75 if I'm not mistaken. Let's double check that. Dapat nalay ko sa visuals ko din but I forgot to do that. Nalay ko lang is yung monetary value. So yeah, 1.25 nung April 2021. So natanggap natin yun dito. Naging 7,149. Then special dividends nung October. Which is nabayaran nung November. So dito natin yung mga dadagdag. Actually, pwede natin idagdag sa December na rin. Kasi November 9 binayaran. But yeah. I mean, it would just almost be the same. So let's put it there. Ayan. Diba? Naging 9950 yung total shares na mabibili nyo. If nag-dollar cost, if nagpa-peso cost average lang. Like, kung nasasanay sa dollar cost averaging kasi yun yung mas common gamitin. Especially sa crypto. But yeah. Peso cost average. So, instead of 120k na lang yung iyong, what they call this, capital. Naging 141,000 na. And, kung isipin nyo, dapat nilagay din natin yung lump sum dito. We can't. Kasi, ito isang bagsakan lang eh. So, hindi mo masasabi na, for example, January ka bumili ng lump sum, yun, mapdadagdagan pa rin yung capital mo. But, hindi ka makakabili kasi nga, lump sum ka nag invest or isang bagsakan yung pagbili mo. So, hindi mo pwedeng idagdag itong mga dividends sa to dito sa lump sum value na to. Kasi ito naman, ang original capital mo pa rin talaga is 120. Nadagdag lang yung mga binigay sa'yo na dividends. Kasi nga, nag-hold ka na nung stocks. So, yun yung explanation doon kung bakit hindi ito naging 141k din. And of course, since mas malaki na yung capital mo, since nadagdagan nga kasi binayaran ka ng dividends nung stocks or nung company, mas marami na yung stocks mo na nabili. And then, hindi siya mas malaki percentage-wise but you have more shares. So, ibig sabihin nun, pag nagbigay ulit sila ng dividends, like this, 2022, nagbigay na ulit sila ng 1.5, then, mas malaki yung makukuha mo rin na, na dividends. Kasi mas marami kang shares, 1.5. In, compa- in comparison dito sa lump sum. And again, nga, hindi mo kailangan timingan yung market. Nagpe-peso ko sa average ka lang, bumibili ka lang every single month, para ka lang nagbabayad ng bill, no? Diba? For example, ano ba yung binabayaran first of the month? I'm not sure. Pero yung sa akin, pinaka, maag, pinaka una akong binabayaran na bill pag nag-start yung buwan is yung phone ko. So, parang pwede nyo i-compare yun, no? Dito sa peso cost averaging. Mga parang may binabayaran na isang bill na ang cost is 5,000 pesos. And it's really up to you kung magkano yung gagawin yung capital. No? Pwede, pwede nyo gawin 1,000 pesos lang if natatakot kayo na ah, baka, baka mawala yung pera ko. Hindi naman kayo mawala ng pera unless, unless syempre ibenta nyo ng palog eh, ba? Diba? So kung mag-hold lang kayo, then for example, maging negative yon and in one year, no? I mean, hindi siya magiging realized loss unless ibenta nyo nga yung stock. Kasi ako oh, personally for me, I experienced that as well in 2020. And trust me, I was questioning my life decisions back then. Kasi I was just saving up money from 2017 up until 20, late 2018. Kasi yung start ako sa stocks nga 2018. Pero hindi ko kasi nilagay lahat nung nung ipon ko kasi yun yung yun yung emergency fund ko eh natutunan ganyan kay what they call this kay Mark Cuban na at least 6 months of your worth of your uh, salary dapat yun yung emergency fund mo para for example mawalan ka ng trabaho or magka emergency then meron kang panggasos 
and liquid yun. But nung 2020 nga, nakita ko na grabe na bura na pera sa market, billion, trillion. So, I decided na, hey, I can risk this, this money <laughs> sa stock market. Kasi, wala naman akong liability, wala akong utang, wala akong sinasuportahan na ibang tao. So, I, I could afford to lose that, all that money and I'd still be okay. I mean, yeah, that is a privilege and in-acknowledge ko yun. Kasi some of us, hindi natin kayang i-risk yun. No? Yung ganun, for example, kalaking pera. But yeah, for me, I was fortunate enough that I had the privilege na even though kung di maganda yung nangyari after that particular buy or investment, I mean, I could, I could still live with it. But yeah, fortunately enough then maganda naman yung kinalabasan kasi tumaas yung market ng 2021 so I was able to to like profit from from those investments and yeah again bottom line kung saan sana tayo na nakapunta yung point is just pesos average a good company dividend paying stock sa sa PSEI member ng PSEI kasi that that's like the safest route. Dividend paying stock, member ng PSEI, mataas yung market capitalization. Kasi yung member ng PSEI, they're like the biggest and most reputable companies here in the Philippines. I mean, for example, if next year mag magsara yung globe, then I would be surprised, right? Everyone would be surprised. Kasi PLDT and Globe, there's, those are the two big players here sa telecommunications sa Philippines. So, if Globe shuts down next year, I mean, that is complete chaos, right? But I don't think that will happen. So, nakon yung idea na, huh, probably Globe is a good investment. And I'm not saying that it is. You still have to do your due diligence and you still have to do your own research. Because a good investment for me doesn't necessarily mean a good investment for you. So again, ibat ibat ay ng circumstances, ibat ibat ay ng financial situation, ibat ibat ay ng lifestyles. So yeah, again, I'm just here to sort of guide you, but I am not giving you actual financial advice and I'm not saying or I'm not telling you to buy anything at all. I'm sharing you yung mga bagay na nag-work sa akin and yung mga stocks na kumita na ako and continuously pa akong kumikita because of dividends. So yep, I think that will wrap up this episode. And hopefully, malinaw naman yung ating, um, I'm not gonna say visualization, but I'd say presentation of some sort of pesos averaging. And hopefully, nakatulong to. And hopefully, nakatulong ng, ng konti sa pag sa pesos averaging and sa dollar cost averaging and how it works. Again, this will really vary dun sa stock na pinili nyo. Kasi again, I just chose Semerara Mining kasi nga maganda yung pagtaas niya kumbaga no, since nung pandemic. A lot of stocks is still up from their lows nung, nung 2020. I mean, majority of the stocks talaga is still up like double digits percentage-wise from their lows nung 2020. But some medyo close na no, dun sa kanilang lows nung 2020. So, there will be investments like that. But then again, if you're investing in dividend-paying stocks, it, the prices will go up, the prices will go down. You'll still get paid dividends. Because your company is profitable. And they can continuously or they can continue being profitable in the foreseeable future. You can always read their financial reports for that. And yeah, end na natin yung episode here, guys. Sana may natutunan kayo. 
and if umabot kayo at the end of this episode thank you very much appreciate you if nagustuhan nyo yung content ko and if you want to learn more then subscribe na to my channel cause I post new episodes or new videos every single day you may also follow me sa mga social media platforms ko. I'm on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at MNPS page. You may support the channel by becoming a YouTube member. Merong link dyan sa description sa baba. Alternatively, if may bilhin kayo sa Lazada or sa Shopee, meron din akong mga affiliate links dyan. Thanks again for watching and listening everyone. Stay safe. I'll see you all in the next episode. Always remember, be peso smart.